And so we're seeing an uptick definitely in that activity monitoring uh, to be able to look at it and say, you know, what are people doing? And, and in a way, what this is replacing is, uh, you know, kind of a, the old fashioned seam philosophy, right? Because if no one's in the office, the seam's not gathering a lot of data. It's gathering great data for the data center and for the servers, but there's no humans yeah. behind there anymore. Uh, so unless you happen to have a, a seam system that's reaching out on every endpoint and tracking everything, uh, you're, you kind of have a gap in that visibility. Uh, and, and I think that's where that activity tracking is starting to pick up because if you have abnormal amounts of printing or you have abnormal uh, application usage, you know, before it'd be caught onto your firewall. Now you kind of have to bridge that back down to the endpoint, um, e either related to the next gen AV or cloud security or just that pure activity monitoring that says, okay, what's going on? What are people searching? Uh, how long do they spend sitting there just chatting to each other versus actually doing emails, doing spreadsheets, logging into the production systems? Uh, and there are solutions that will absolutely do it. They don't care that no one ever logs into the data center anymore. Uh, most of the good systems nowadays don't care if you're VPN'd in, kind of the traditional ones, you had to be VPN'd in, and so that really curtailed uh, sure. what you could do, what you could see. Um, but nowadays, none of that matters. Uh, everything's really uh, more cloud-friendly, so a lot of that stuff you can just see straight from the endpoint uh, into the service cloud. So with just uh, as this topic, uh, this SSL decryption and outbound. So, what you're are you seeing that? So now people have assets in their data the traditional data center. Now potentially a co-location facility. Yep. Then potentially uh, Azure or AWS. Yep. And and so SSL decryption, both inbound and we're particularly talking about outbound. outbound. Mm -hmm. So what? How how does someone watch that at scale? So you're not having to remote into multiple of different firewalls, like how is SSL managed? Or how would you want to see it managed moving forward? Well, so one of the good things- Can I ask one thing, why is, out, why is outbound important to, just, let's just, <laughs> why is out, outbound important to manage to begin with? So outbound's important because it's uh, A, what hides most of your key indicators of compromise. Uh, it's B, how most exfiltration happens and command and control phone home. There has to be some kind of outbound connection for that to happen. Um, and it is, uh, kind of your high watermark for uh, what traffic is going on in the environment. So as users have left the environment, then things coming in uh, should be the services you're providing. When things going out don't match the services you're providing, you know you have an issue. Because for example, your domain controller shouldn't be browsing the internet, right? Your uh, banking, or, I'm sorry, your finance system shouldn't be sitting there going to download sites. You, you know, these yeah. are things that really shouldn't happen. Um, and, and what we see is uh, there, there's really been an uptick in uh, what, what we see as those risks of uh, uncontrolled outbound uh, because of the philosophy change of people who are at home, I don't have to worry about it. And we're seeing kind of an immediate impact on just pure the number of calls we get. So the number of people call us in pain, panicked because yeah. of outbound, uh, something outbound control would have fixed um, is rising dramatically. And, and the funny thing is because the users have left, it actually means SSL decryption and outbound protocol control is even easier because there's no people. And that was actually the hardest parts of those technologies was uh, uh, people, oh, especially executives yeah, and, and stuff like that, that wanted to do whatever they want. <laughs> I'm pointing at you on purpose um, <laughs> as, as our model uh, of difficulty. I don't break SSL. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, th the people that were hard are now at home. And, and so the only thing left is the servers. And really, from an IT perspective, if you don't know what your servers are supposed to be doing, you've so got a whole different okay, problem. Okay, so you're saying that, okay, all the people are home. So I don't have to deal with people complaining about trying to go to different sites yep. and tuning certs on the firewall, which would, which is what outbound, that's what makes it hard. This what makes it hard, yeah. And, and, and fail is mm -hmm. when people, when you can't at scale, uh, tune the certs across a wide user population. But now they're at home, so that excuse is off the table. So right. now you just want to make sure the assets that remain aren't going to use Uzbekistan without you knowing. They're not phoning someplace Correct. and channeling out. You want to be you want to take the firewall's advanced services and run it on that protocol. Correct. Because that protocol typically is just going to scoot out the firewall and not be examined, right? Okay. Yeah, or, or another good example is. Uh, a, a lot of people were whitelisting things like Microsoft, which is always a, a bad idea, or, or Google. 
Uh, and so we'll go in and we'll see a server and that server will be hitting, if you break apart uh, SSL, that server will be hitting a, a Google Docs library or a uh, OneDrive or a SharePoint library where normally it should be talking to Azure services, but it should not be going to a file drop because that's another really easy way people do command and control for ransomware or uh, you know, exfiltrate data by just shoving a file up there or a text stream up there. Uh, and without that control, you're, you're really kind of missing those things because the servers still need to talk to the cloud. As things yeah. become more and more cloud ready, you have an interaction between uh, your servers and the cloud. And, and whether that's at AWS or on-prem, it, it doesn't really matter. We're talking about all of them universally. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we talk about things like outbound protocol control and decryption, um, it works best where you have to have a... Uh, similar, uh, if not equal, platform doing the control across all of those sites. So for example, if you've got the baked in AWS firewall uh, at AWS, and then you have you know, some kind of uh, a virtual Palo over at Azure, but then you have a ASA over at corporate, you're never gonna get a good visibility of what's going on. Um, and you'll never get all of them set up to be equal. And what we're finding is the more unequal they are, the more at risk people are for uh, getting compromised. Uh, two of the compromises I was referring to that have happened in the last couple of weeks, um, compromises all started in people's public, generally WordPress web system mm -hmm. where everyone thought it doesn't matter. It's just the it's WWW, the... it's just marketing, yeah, it's just marketing. Yeah, nobody cares. Um, almost all of the hacks started there and then bridged in from there. Uh, and often that's because uh, people are doing combined services and they push stuff to the cloud in a hurry, yeah. but no one really realized that, hey, that AWS deployment of WordPress or Azure deployment of WordPress can talk to your other cloud infrastructure, which can then talk to corporate. Yeah. Uh, and so you just have this daisy chain of uh, contagion that uh, walks through the environment. Um, and you know, standard, basic, really boring firewalls would have prevented most of those types of attacks. But, but, uh...